Alright guys, um, I've showed before my web server, it wasn't uh, built yet, but now I got the hard drives for it. It has two redundant 250 gig hard drives in there, um, in RAID 1, and so they're essentially mirroring each other. Um, it has 16 gigs of RAM, and it has an E350 motherboard, which is a fairly low power motherboard. Um, it, it had does, It's way more than enough for what I'm serving right now. I hope, hope to serve a couple more sites for friends and stuff, just so they can save money instead of paying for hosting. Um, so that's the hardware on this thing. Everything, the hardware and some setup instructions are going to be listed, um, are going to be on the link in the description below. It's going to be linked to my website where I'll have how to set this up and some things I've, I do for backups and stuff. Um, I still, you know, I'm planning on doing more things with this web server and learning more, uh, but I am still learning and uh, I'm trying to become better at web serving. Um, the stack on here is Nginx, there's uh, PHP on there, and there is um, MySQL on there as well. Um, for caching, I have Varnish, and I have APC and Memcache. But actually, Varnish I have on my um, on my firewall, which is this box right here. So I have another. I'll have another video on the firewall. But essentially, uh, um, images and stuff are cached on here, and, and JavaScript and stuff. But the rest of the work is done by this thing. This is the real web server. It has, um, you know, runs the PHP code and all that stuff. So that's just to spread out the RAM usage. I mean, I'm not going to use all 16 gigs of RAM in here, but I just wanted to learn how to do this stuff. Um, yeah, so this also has a USB connected to it from the UPS down here. So this UPS is connected to this one. So um, I can check the, I can, I have a thing running on it where I can check to see how much time left is on the UPS in case the power goes out. I actually don't get email reports from this because I already get email reports from my FreeNAS box, so I don't need double email reports if my power goes out. So yeah, that's my web server. I'm going to show kind of my stuff here. This is the uh, essentially, I click on Multimon. It, um, this is the UPS info I have on here. I'll show how to do all this stuff in the link in the description below. Here's like um, one of the main websites I have on there. It's just my my website, which is going to have a lot of information on networking and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's, it's a it's a Drupal, but you know you can throw WordPresses on here. You can do whatever you want. Static web pages. I have a ton of static web pages on there for people. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to do some benchmarking. I have a VM stat running. If you can see from the light. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what the CPU idle is. Right there, you can see that the CPU idle is 100. So that means the CPU is basically always idle, which means it doesn't have anything to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to run uh, Siege on it. First, we're going to run it through my domain name. And um, you'll see that since it's going out to the WAN and coming back, I'm fairly limited by what charter my ISP is letting me do. Um, so I'm running the Siege process hitting my website, I'm getting 315 transactions per second. So that's pretty good, but um, you can see that my I got to around 80% um, CPU idle. So it's only using about 20% CPU doing those 300 requests per second. So um, you can see CPU was not the limiting factor. The limiting factor was um, that. Now we're going to hit it. I'm going to just hit directly my firewall going so it's going through varnish but it's still hitting my website um yeah and we'll see what that gives me so this is not going out to the WAN at all you can see i'm hitting 2000 to um 2100 transactions per second there so that's because uh, i'm not going through charter or any of those things which is slowing down my transactions per second and you can see my cpu idle went to about 35 40. so um, it's not CPU that is the limiting factor because it was still idling. Um, so I could handle even more than that. I'm not sure what the limiting factor is at that point. I don't think it's I.O. either because I check I.O. and that's not it. So it's not I.O. from hitting the MySQL database. So um, still try to increase those requests per second, but it doesn't really matter because my charter, because uh, my ISP is limiting it. I've even tried this on static web pages I host. So if I try a static web page, that I host, 
Let's see if I type that right. Yeah, I'm still getting, they only got 288 transactions per second. That's because I'm not caching that site, actually. Let me, um, yeah, that's that's fine, but I, I've i tried um, static pages that I do cache in Varnish, and I get around 330. So no matter what, I get around the same. What I have done is I've tried Cloudfire, which is kind of like a CDN, and I'm getting even more requests per second. I'm getting like 1,200. But uh, I don't totally request, um, I don't totally recommend Cloudfire because if your site isn't busy, um, your stuff will be taken out of cache, which will mean that first request is even slower. So if you're only getting a couple requests per day, it's an even slower transaction time that first time. So uh, what I do recommend is a CDN, but you those cost money. So that's why Cloudfire might be a good option if your site's fairly busy. So yeah, that's some benchmarking of my web server. I mean, just for a low power box, it's getting pretty good things. And just for home serving, it's great. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check the link in the description for the hardware and software. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys later.